What's up guys, it's your boy Techie Chris and I'm back here with another video. Guys, today in this video, I will be reacting to network engineering TikToks. If you guys don't know where to find me on TikTok, you guys can find me at this app right here. But I meet shows with a lot of cool guys who also do network engineering. So I thought it would be only right to watch their videos and give a reaction. Watch some of the videos that I haven't had a chance to actually look at and just give my honest reaction and give my input on about how their takes are on network engineering. So let's go ahead and get straight to the video, guys. And guys, before we even get to the video, I have to say I got this idea from my boy Wally. Y'all go subscribe to him right here. He is another network engineer that makes great content about network engineering. And he had his idea to react to network engineer TikTok. Yeah, so big shout out to Wally for this idea. All right, so let's get started. Who told y'all cybersecurity and IT was a get rich quick scheme? Who told y'all this? Brother, you have the Google IT certification and Security Plus. You're not getting anywhere with that. You think because you got Security Plus, you deserve $100,000 plus a year? You think you're going to make six figures? Brother. Yeah, I'm going to stop it right there for a second. Yeah, so this is very true. So a lot of people have this misconception that you get a Security Plus. Um, you get a Google IT support certification. You get these lower entry level certifications and you automatically are guaranteed a 100K salary. Um, that quite frankly is just not true. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, it's definitely possible to get that high salary with, you know, those lower entry level certifications. But in fields like IT, cybersecurity, you need to have hands on experience, whether it be working in a real environment or whether it be labbing. No matter what it is, you need to have some kind of hands on experience. Um, so yeah, expecting high salaries with just, you know, these entry level certifications just is not realistic a lot of the times. Like, you know, there's people who make, you know, 70K straight out with these certifications, but expecting 100K and being set on, dead set on 100K, it's not, it's not, it's not realistic, right? But let's keep watching this. Brother, getting Security Plus is like having a high school diploma. You need it for almost every cybersecurity job out there. My brothers and sisters, Security Plus is just the start. You got a whole bunch of certs out there depending on what career you want to chase. You got a whole bunch out there. You got system admins. You got network engineers. I'm a network engineer. Represent. Then you got cloud. You got GRC. You got penetration testers. You got cybersecurity analysts. There's so many different things. And this shit is not a get rich quick scheme. You got to put effort, time, and fucking consistency yeah man so i mean josh pretty much hit the nail on the coffin with this one y'all go follow josh on tiktok he's that's my boy right there he's another network engineer um but yeah i mean yeah this tech stuff is not a get rich quick scheme you have to put a lot of work certificate study for certifications like a ccna even a security plus which is more of an entry-level certification it takes a lot of time and commitment to actually get these certifications so it is far from a get rich quick scheme as josh had mentioned right now so yeah, man, that's, um, thank you, Josh, for this video. I mean, pretty much hit every point just as I would expect. So yeah, let's go to the next video. This is how you can make six figures in the next two to three years as a network engineer if you have no IT experience. Spend six months getting your CCNA certification, then build your resume, learn how to interview properly for technical questions in IT interviews, get a network admin or analyst job or junior not um junior network engineer role paying you between 60 to 80k stay there for a year learn as much as you can work with as many technologies as you can live as much as you can and give yourself as much exposure as you can after about a year start applying to network engineer roles and also get your ccmp certification while you're applying list on your resume that you're working towards your ccmp if you get a network engineer role congrats you made it if not get your ccmp then keep applying to network engineer roles and after enough persistency with combined with your experience and knowing how to interview properly you will get a network engineer so I'm gonna stop it right there. Um, yeah, he mentioned some great things inside of this video, but a lot of the time, if you haven't worked in an environment for a number of time, like if you haven't worked as a network engineer or a network admin for at least a year, at least two years, actually touching real stuff, I wouldn't recommend getting your CCMP. That's just my opinion because CCMP, there is a lot of theory on it. And if you haven't actually touched a lot of stuff in a real environment, a lot of the time those, um, 
hiring managers are not even going to take you serious if you have never really been in you know large maintenance windows if you haven't actually been on call working on real situations so that's just my take uh, ccmp is a great certification if you have experience but if you don't have experience i wouldn't recommend ccmp but uh, some of the other stuff that he mentioned in this video like kind of the roadmap if you are able to do this exact roadmap this is a great roadmap you know but the thing is that it's, it's not always so easy to get these network admin and network engineer positions so early on in your career but if you are able to follow this roadmap from where he started and to where he ended, then that would be a great roadmap for you if you are able to. But the thing is that a lot of the time, simply just not able to get that job, right? Without, without you know, initial experience. But let's keep going. In your role, you should be making anywhere between 100 to 120K a year, and you can do it in two to three years. A lot of people will tell you that's not possible and that I'm bullshitting you, but I promise you can. And if you need proof, Go on LinkedIn, go search up network engineers, look at people's previous experience, and you will see a decent handful of people have done this exact same path. Some of them don't even have the CCMP. All they have is a CCNA, one or two years of experience, and then they got to a network engineer role. Yeah, so um, we're going to end it right there. So yeah, a lot of the stuff that he said in this video is pretty true. It can happen, but um, I always tell people to be very optimistic. You know, it's it's not like you're not guaranteed to have those positions just because you have the certifications. You really have to put in the work and really know what you are talking about. But a lot of the stuff they said, I, I won't knock it. Some of the stuff is really good and really true, but you know what I'm saying? You have to take everything with a grain of salt. Your path is not going to be the same as the next person's path. So that's my take on that. And since it was my boy Wally's idea, I feel like it's best that we watch one of his videos during his video. Why are y'all not practicing interviews? I, 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 this, this is actually surprising to me. I know so many individuals who have certs, who have the credentials, they have everything, they have the college degree, but they have never ever done a single mock interview. And they're like, I can't get a job. I, my, you know, I'm doing all these interviews, I can't get a job. Have you even practiced interviews? Are you just interviewing for fun? Are you are you recording your interviews? Are you actually doing that? If you're not recording your interviews, you guys are so behind. You guys need to record your interviews. You guys need to actually have it reviewed by someone who's actually in the industry. Actually in the industry. Because at the end of the day, if you're trying to get a job, you have to go through an interview at the end of the day. And how are you going to pass that interview? Think about it. How are you gonna pass the interview if you- Yeah, so we'll stop it right there, man. Um, honestly, Wiley, you, you spitting facts right here, man. So. This is a big thing, right? A lot of people, um, you know, they tick their resume up, they do a lot of this stuff and they get to the interviews, but they choke in the interviews because they don't have the proper interview skills. You have never sat down and did a mock interview and all of the interviews that you have done in the past um, probably didn't do too well on it and you didn't take any notes from it and prep for the next interview. Um, interviews are a big part. If you can't get past the interview, you're obviously not gonna get the job. So. This is one thing that I always preach as well is to practice on your communication skills, which will then lead into your interview skills. This is one reason why I always talk about making content, right? I make content and I talk to you guys. Um, I sit here, I talk to you guys and, you know, give my advice on things, give my takes on things. But this is also helping with my communication skills as every time that I get in front of the camera and I'm talking and I'm just, you know, forcing myself to be confident in what I'm saying. This is working on my communication skills and stuff like this transfer, transfers over to, to interviews. Um, if I go to an interview now, I wouldn't have a problem talking to the interviewer about whatever it is that I have to talk to them about because I'm very comfortable talking to people. Right. Even though I'm not talking to you guys to your face to face, I'm sitting here and I'm having a conversation with you. So, yeah, um, practicing your interview skills. This is one of the best ways to grow in network engineering and not only network engineering, but tech in general. You have to have great interview skills. If you don't know if the interviews are good or bad. I mean, I've listened to so many interviews and people think, oh, my interview skills are great. I'm not getting jobs. And I listen to the interview. I'm like, what are you saying, bro? What are you saying? So please focus and learn how to get better at interviewing. And that's kind of what I help people with. So if you guys are looking to actually break into network engineering or any field in tech, specifically network engineering, because it's very undersaturated, DM me the word network down below and I'll show Okay, yeah, so y'all go DM him the word network if you guys are trying to practice on your interview skills. But yeah, great video, all a great video. Let's go to the next one. All right, so the next video is from my boy Network Ninja. He is another network engineer, great guy, um, drops a lot of gems. He's been in the field for quite some time, so let's go ahead and see what he has to say. Best tips if you wanna improve your chances on passing that CCNA. If you do all three out of three, I'm pretty sure you're gonna pass. If you do two out of three, 
you may pass. And if you do one out of three, you're going to be cooked on that test. All right, at number three, I'm going study group. Get into a study group. This is going to show you where you're really weak at and it helps you out because it gives you that kind of motivation. It's kind of like working out if you've ever worked out with somebody. It just pushes you that much more to do better on the test on test day. Number two, it kind of goes along with number three. You need to go ahead and teach this to somebody. If you teach it to somebody, I don't care if it's a friend, relative, whatever the case may be, just try to teach whatever topic you're weak on if it's subnet and try to teach somebody else subnet and even if they don't get it the fact that you're teaching it helps you improve tremendously and the final tip if you've been following me for any time i'm telling you this and i'm doing it myself study your bosun practice exam or any practice questions i don't care if you're studying for cybersecurity or if you're studying for the ccna you need to be practicing the practice questions don't yeah, so um, Network Ninja, he pretty much went three out of three right here, right? He talked about how you need to have a study group, how you need to be teaching the concepts, and how you need to be working on your practice exams. All three of those are 110% true. Having a study group kind of groups you with other people who are interested in the same thing that you are studying and it kind of helps you and pushes you to keep working hard. Uh, having study groups, you know, you have people in there that are going to hold you accountable when you don't understand something after a certain period of time and just kind of help you with the process of studying and just you know getting better um when you start teaching concepts which was his second point that he made teaching concept teaching concepts like teaching network engineering concepts will take you so far this is a like i said earlier in this video this is a reason why i make content i teach concepts i learn a concept and i teach concepts just so i can retain the information that i'm learning and it's also to help you guys but when I teach a concept and I, you know, explain what poor security does, explain what a VLAN does to somebody, it helps all that stuff retain and, you know, just stay with me so that I'm able to tell the next person and tell the interviewer or in a live environment, I have no issue with, you know, explaining it to someone who doesn't understand it. And then the last thing that he said is to be studying. For CCNA specifically, Boson XM is the way to go. I use Boson XM for all of my CCNA studies when it came to actual practice exams. And if you are not doing practice exams before you take the exam, um, more than likely you're not gonna do well on the exam. That's just being straight up with you guys, right? You need to study. You need to use the resources that are given to you. Although Boston XM is not free, but it's an investment to yourself. It's an investment so that you can pass your CCNA and your CCNA is also another investment so that you can get a job, right? So all of these stuff kind of add up and, you know, go together. So yeah, all of the points that he said in this video were pretty much spot on, so yeah. Thank you, Network Ninja, for this video. This is a great video. All right, so the last video that we are going to be reacting to is my boy, Data Bunny. So let's see what he's talking about. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Chris here, the one and only Data Bunny. Quick tip. Um, so I was involved and tasked with installing two network switches in a network closet in a room that isn't fully finished yet. Uh, for example, the door has no knob on it. So someone who has access to this building could literally go down to that floor, open the door without having any key or anything, and have access to the network closet. The network closet has a, you know, like you know, one of those little clipping lever, you know, handles on it. But as of now, that e that's not even locked. So I was tasked with installing network switches in that closet. Uh, there's a separate team that's doing the AV stuff. There's a, you know, there's a, a low voltage team that's doing that was. Okay, so basically what the data bunny is saying here is that he um, noticed that there is a room inside of, or he has a network closet that doesn't have good enough physical security. So he is now being tasked with putting in port security for that room. Um, basically port security is a security measure that you place on the interfaces of network switches. And all it does is it won't allow you know, if your MAC address doesn't add up to the MAC address that is configured on that port, you will not be able to get access to that port. So he is basically saying that he is about to go and configure port security on the switches inside of that room. So um, I've also been tasked with doing something similar to this inside of the environments that I've worked in and just making sure that things are secure. So yeah, this is another great video. Y'all make sure that you guys go subscribe to Data Bunny here on YouTube. He's another great guy. Um, me and him are both mutuals. Um, his name is also Chris, just like mine, funny enough. But yeah, man, um, this is a very, very great and educational video right here. I mean, port security is a big thing, especially for enhancing the security um, inside of your environment. So 
Great video, Data Bunny. Yeah, guys, but that is it for this video. I hope my reactions were kind of good enough to give you guys a better understanding of what these topics that these guys are talking about. All of these creators are great creators and great networking creators. Um, I watch all of their videos. So for me to be able to sit here and react to their videos that I haven't seen yet, it's a great feeling. Hopefully you guys are able to go and subscribe to them, go follow them on their platforms and, you know, also help them out as well. Cause these guys are all great creators, like I said. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do appreciate you guys. Make sure that you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. All that stuff will be in the description and make sure you guys go watch older videos if you guys wanna learn a lot more about network engineering. But yep, that is it for this video and I am out of here.